Hi, my name is David Edwards. I'm from the Cleveland Stater, and I'm here with the ambassador to Turkey. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so first off, I want to know, um, what is the relations with the U.S. so far? What are some of the challenges? What are we um, going strong on? And what do we need? What are some of our weaknesses? Uh, weaknesses meaning the U.S.? Yeah. Right. Uh, Turkey, U.S. If you look at the foreign policy agenda, so Turkey and the United States, now if you just uh, go clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter what subjects you see, what issues. For instance, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israeli Palestinian conflict, the whole Middle East, North Africa, Caucasus, Balkans, energy security, fight against terrorism, all are in the foreign policy agenda of the United States. It is an overlapping foreign policy agenda with Turkey. It's almost exactly the same. We, these issues are priority issues. The Arab Spring, for instance, one of the hottest and very, very, I think, recent uh, developments in our region. So, these two countries, Turkey and the U.S., need each other. Turkey and the U.S., especially in the recent couple of months, especially by the start of the Arab Spring, is coming more and more closer. Why? Because Turkey is uh, a different country as a regional power. It is the only Muslim country out of 57 others which has a democratic, secular, free market economy system which gives a lot of legitimacy to what U.S. says or does. If U.S. does anything that you can think of, if U.S. Um, as a part of NATO mission in Afghanistan sends its troops to Afghanistan, in the absence of our troops there as a, another NATO partner, this whole mission has no ground. This legitimacy is important for the United States. Why? Because U.S. is a is a global power. Turkey is a regional power. But more importantly, Turkey is a Muslim majority country. I um, I want to bounce off what you last said. And um, a lot of people will draw parallels between your country and Indonesia and the fact that they have large Muslim populations and they're both democratic. Do you see parallels between your country and Indonesia? Well, I don't want to be undiplomatic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't make me to name names, but yeah. other Muslim countries yeah. uh, do not have the qualities and the values that we have, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish they had. That makes us different from others. What makes us pro different from uh, uh, others is this very important quality, that as a Muslim-majority country, democracy goes hand-in-hand hand with what secularism, modernism, free market economy, this whole uh, bunch of things come together and make us powerful in our region. So. That's why we say we are a regional power. And with all, uh, I think, due respect to what, of course, other countries have done, but no, no, no other Muslim country, no other Muslim majority country has achieved 11.6% growth rate in the, in the first quarter of this year. No other Muslim country has achieved 8.4% uh, uh, growth rate in the second quarter. And we are next after China, globally, yeah. in our economic performance. So we are far better than many of them. I'm not trying to praise, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, this is just uh, a, a, a series of facts that I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, um, what is the current status of Turkey's um, potential admission into the EU, are you uh, still got to try and pursue This is a good question and thank you for asking that. 
uh, I, I love to answer those questions because you see, uh, Turkey's admission, or uh, I mean, I wouldn't quite qualify it as an admission. Turkey's being a full member to the EU takes some big thinking for the Europeans, not for us. If they want to bring uh, a diversity, a religious and cultural and social diversity into their civilization project, they have to admit Turkey or they have to accept Turkey as an equal partner, as a full member. If they don't, they will never become a global power. They will never become a balancing actor in the international forum. So what they do today, they are far better than many of other uh, full members. I can name you names. It would be on diplomatic, so I won't do it. But uh, you know it better than I do. Anyone who would just go into the records of any country would see this. See this. One sick man of Europe, now the healthiest man of Europe, talking about Turkey. Yeah? So Turkey deserves this. What we want, we want, we don't want an admission or a, a, a full membership without uh, any uh, checks and balances. We want to be questioned through the values, whether we have embraced them, whether we have implemented them, or implementing, having an intention to implement it. But what they do, just the opposite. They say simply, you're a Muslim majority country, and you are so crowded, you can be a burden to you uh, to the, to the uh, EU. This is wrong. We say we want to become a full member. We want not that we should get uh, our share from the existing cake. No, we want to go in, make the cake bigger, and then get our share. So you said. Yeah. So we. This is a two-way street. So you think the biggest reason for Turkey from not getting in is because it's a mainly Muslim state? No, I'm not saying this. Okay. But I said one other thing, very important. I said it requires big thinking on the part of our European friends and counterparts. It should be a country with some talent or the, the peoples of those nations. I, I, I am 100% sure the peoples of those nations will let Turkey in as a full member, but not the political people, because political people has their, have their political agendas. If you judge Turkey through those political agendas, then this, this is not big thinking. Why U.S. is supporting Turkey's uh, uh, full membership from the very beginning? From the, early, the earlier days, one simple fact, because this is the land of big thinking. The people are taught to think big in this country. What um, there's been recent news reports saying that Turkey's starting to get more involved in what's going on in Syria. Do you think other countries should follow that model, or what do you think the um, what do you think should happen? Uh, let me tell you this: Look, Turkey cannot cannot stay indifferent to those problems. Why? We have 950 kilometer border with Syria. It's adjacent. It's like uh, the, the, the Lake Erie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just like that. Just take a moment and think, and put yourself into the place of Turkey. We have 400 kilometer border with I Iraq. We have 300 and something kilometer border with Iran. We have, uh, again, we have just uh, uh, at arm's length with the uh, Middle East. So even if we push ourselves uh, or those people uh, away, we have family affinity, we have cultural and historical affinity with those people. So they will come and catch us. So what I'm saying, we have to engage with, with the people. Why? We want our region, our neighborhood, a peaceful one. We don't want any violence, we don't want any conflicts, we don't want any, uh, I think, disorder in the, in the adjacent areas or, and beyond. Why? In that, in that uh, atmosphere, you would never achieve uh, 
uh, or give your people uh, uh, the, uh, the, the more qualified uh, living standards. You cannot provide that. You cannot keep up and sustain your democracy if your neighbors you know, right next to you uh, think about uh, Mexico, then, think yeah. about Canada. Yeah. So I mean, you have a ripple effect in your own. So yeah. that's it. So yeah. we have to be engaged. We have nothing to do with the regime. We are not just aiming at changing regimes there in any country. Yeah. It is not none of our business. Yeah. What we want is peace and tranquility in our region. Are um, the relations between Turkey and Israel, that, how, are the, how have they been recently? I have served in Israel as an ambassador before coming here. Yeah. So um, I know the people, I know the country. They're very, very vibrant. They're very sophisticated people. They are, I think, important players in the region. If you ask me to name three countries in the region, I would name Turkey, number one, uh, Iran, number two, and Israel, number three. But what makes Turkey and Israel different from other, uh, the third country, is our democracies. We are the only democracies in that country, in that region. So uh, our relationship is natural. It's not a, a sort of, we have 60, 60, uh, uh, 63 of, uh, years of history of Israel. Yeah. Turkey is the second after the United States who recognize Israel as an independent state in the region. Do you think they... The only country. We have 519 years of history. Do you, what, did you, what is Turkey's position on Palestine seeking UN state? Well, I think uh, we've, uh, from the very beginning, what we said is they deserve a state. Two-state solution is the only solution. There is no other way. There is no peace unless you accept and try to put up such a regime, uh, uh, such a solution. There is no other way. So that's what we advocated from the, from the very beginning. So. I, I have to go, you know, I have okay, to run out. Okay, one more question. We, we really need to go. We need to go. We need to go. We need to go. We'll, we'll wrap it up. Okay? Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Okay.